form. I have to give a big thank you to uh, Trina and Patty who spent some extra time with their highlighters last night getting some information highlighted to make this easier to follow. <clears throat> You've got in your materials an old HUD and a new HUD. We're going to look at the same transaction Jeff talked about on the settlement statement. Now we've come forward to the closing table, but I've used the two forms to give you a comparison. So you see what you're used to seeing and how that's going to look today. Yeah, none of this is on a slide, so that's a good idea. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice now, the old HUD is your plain old two-page HUD-1 settlement statement that you're used to seeing. But now, with RESPA reform, the new 2010 HUD is the simplified four-page HUD. <laughs> yeah. Now, these will, in, in real life, be legal-sized. This is just for convenience for the handout. But the first thing you notice on page one is your bottom lines don't change. Your buyer's money come into the table and your seller's proceeds walking out are the same thing. Where everything is different is how we get there, mostly starting with page two. We'll come back to page one, so don't let that get far away. In our make-believe situation, of course, the seller uh, for the earnest money contract is paying for the owner's policy, as they always do in this part of the world. Uh, also, sellers agreed to pay $1,000 in borrower's closing cost. So on the old HUD, simple page one, it's just like you'd expect it. You're going to see on line 1108, the title insurance policy carried all the way over and on the seller side. You're also going to see on the lower half of the page, a lot of the fees that are normally on the buyer's column just moved over to the sellers until we make up the $1,000. Standard practice. Then when you get to the new HUD, your nice color-coded one, you're going to see in the 1100 series, the owner's title policy is in the borrower's column. This is because HUD requires it to be disclosed on the GFE as a cost to the borrower, and anything that discloses a cost to the borrower is shown on the HUD is collected by, from the borrower. You also will notice that this $1,000 worth of closing cost hasn't been moved over to the seller's side. Because, again, those are borrower's fees that the seller is going to pay later, and everything that's paid later is back up on page one. So even though the contract clearly says that the title policy is the seller's cost, it's still going to be on the buyer's side and reimbursed? Yes. yes, I know. It makes no sense to us either. Well, this is a national form, right? Right. And that may a be that. States, a lot of states, like, buyer pays the title policy. It's an option that the borrower wants one, he has to buy it. in Texas, but in a lot of states, the buyer always pays the title yeah. policy. It does happen. Okay, and so this this amount here, this $1,400, is not going to be part of the seller's contribution to the buyer. Proposal. That's separate and apart, because per the terms of the contract, that's a, that says the seller is paying this policy. Then special provisions or elsewhere, it says okay. the seller is so paying $1,000 in closing costs. Two different items. Mm. Okay. Um, let's look real quick, since we've got the nice color code, let's focus for a minute on the roll-up lines. You just look at the 800 series on the new HUD, where you have the uh, lender's fees in connection with the loan. Line 801 has always been what we were talking about earlier, the origination fee, which is almost always a point. It's just kind of always been that way. Now 801 is a total of the lender's charges and it's shown outside the column, which is in the middle of the page. 802, someone had asked a question earlier about yield spread. I believe that's where that would be shown. If the lender is paying a yield spread to a broker, then it's going to be in the total in 801 outside the column and shown as a credit to the buyer. And it will reduce, and then on the roll-up line, even though it's down, it's below it, 803 is a net total because they might that's have in the borrower's column. 1%. It might be really like 3% for a cost, but the yield spread makes up the difference so it averages out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Say so that. Line minus 802 So now it's called a credit. So you might have like $10,000 in 801, 801 but have 6500 802 is a credit, which would Paid by lender to, to broker. Okay. And that's called a credit to the borrower. Okay. 
the net of three is a net result, rolled up, even though it's down. And then the fees below that in the 800 series are separate fees collected by the lender that aren't required by HUD to be rolled up. So they're broken down separately, or some that are. Look at 808. HUD's determined that the fees that a lender may pay to inside counsel or a separate law firm to prepare loan documents is part of the origination charge. And so in 808, you've got a disclosure because we're required to disclose if we're cutting a check to ABC law firm for loan docs, then it's got to be shown there, but that 175 is in the uh, 2008-30 in 801. That's how your roll-ups are going to work. Um, looking in the 1000 series, that's a, actually a very clean way to see how the roll-up lines work. These are your highlighted blue dots. Just your breakdown of your monthly escrow for... Uh, insurance and taxes totaled up into line 1001 for the uh, $3,400 escrow deposit. And you're seeing down the middle of the page, each of those has a reference from GFE line number. And those are pre-printed on the form by HUD to help tell us where to put the numbers when we get them. Um, in the 1100 series, we've talked about the owner policy. It's a little confusing. Let's look at 1102. The settlement fee or our escrow fee in this scenario is $500 in the normal uh, buyer-seller deal. It's split 50-50 between the buyer and the seller. So you don't see 250 in the borrower's column, but you do see 250 outside the column listed in the middle of the page with the first red dot, and then that rolls up. So that 53768 88 includes the 250. Also, the other numbers inside, outside the column and mark with the red dot are what's rolled up into the 537.88. And then the seller's 250 of the escrow fee is right where it always was. So when, you, when you're representing the seller, you don't have to worry about all this. Seller's fees stay the same, and they're done how they're supposed to be other than the credits on page two. But the borrower's fees on the loan are really going to need scrutinizing to, to understand the flow. So each of the colored dots correspond to show you where a fee rolls up to. So if we go back then to page one of the new HUD, you'll see in lines 207 and 208 on the buyer side and corresponding 507 and 508 on the seller side, you're going to see a charge to the seller of the owner policy and the $5 guarantee fee that goes with that and a credit to the borrower. And then on 508, 208, you see the $1,000 closing cost. And again, what's made the new HUD simplified is that means there's a new page four that shows the breakdown of what that $1,000 is. Some lenders are requiring the breakdown, some aren't. So you're not going to see that breakdown every time. Sometimes you may see seller con credit. seller's contribution to closing cost in a total. So when it's a breakdown, it That's right. So we have to 